Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 6. We have a lot to break down in this video, so please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. This episode was absolutely crazy. There was so much that happened and especially I want to get into the start of the episode because there is some interesting parallels that are drawn later in the episode. So lots of stuff to get into. So without further ado, let's go ahead and go into the episode chronologically. So it begins with Bizarro. We're in this red induced world. So this is in fact our first glimpse at Bizarro world and what it actually looks like. So it looks like the skies are always red and everything has this kind of tinge to it. And that's because of the red sun or whatever there is out there. And so we get to see Bizarro going around and He's got that doomsday kind of suit on, he's got the mecha suit on, and it's clear he's about to go to our Earth. As he walks through the house, we get to see various things which confirm some of our theories. And so he has a cat, which is just very cute, like seeing Bizarro having a cat. I like that they're going for a different iteration of Bizarro. This isn't the normal Bizarro we're used to, and I really like that. He has his own family. He has Jordan and probably Jonathan as well. And I presume at one point there was Lois in his life. However, by the looks of things, they aren't around, and this is probably because of Ali and what happened in Bizarro World. And so we continue on. He walks out. You see the red skies and he basically absorbs something that makes his eyes turn blue, makes him powerful, and that gives him that extra strength. And so he goes to the hallway of what looks like maybe the DoD or something like that, and he fights a bunch of soldiers. This moment is actually paralleled later in the episode when Superman fights off a bunch of soldiers in the DoD as Lieutenant Mitch Anderson tries to corner him in and arrest him for treason. We'll get to that as we head towards the end of the video, but in fact, at this point, he is confronted by someone else, and that someone else is in fact Lana Lang from Bizarro World. And she is fully geared up in a Superwoman costume, so that's crazy that that was just confirmed. There was lots of theories as we were going into Superman and Lois, because in the comics there is iterations of Lois where she's Superwoman, there's iterations of Lana Lang when she's Superwoman. But in fact, they've actually gone for it, but they've twisted it in a way that I did not expect. And so we have this Bizarro World version of Lana, so the opposite version of Lana from our Earth is actually a Kryptonian or has the powers of Kryptonian, I don't know how she got them, but she is essentially the superwoman of that Earth. And as you guys know, in some iterations of the comics, especially on Earth 3, superwoman is evil, and so it makes sense that we have this Bizarro version of the world and there is like an evil supervillain like Lana Lang. And so she definitely is one of Bizarro's enemies and they have a fight in the hallway and he's able to temporarily defeat her. And so he goes after his main target and that is the alley of Bizarro World. And so this is the other half of Ali and her fate is left up in the air. I don't know if he killed her or if she still exists over there. But basically, he took the necklace off her neck and then left for Earth Prime. And so that's when we go back to present day. We see in the Fortress of Solitude the explanation of everything that happened. And so that's basically what Bizarro has been telling Superman and also Superman's mom about how he got here. And it seems to infer that Bizarro World is like another world that was once linked to our Earth and then it was just completely cut off and like sent into this kind of alternate dimension. At the start I thought it was like the idea of an Earth within an Earth and that's where Bizarro World is just because of the way that Bizarro actually got to Earth because he literally went into a cave and just continued to smash through it and then at one point he did get to our Earth and that's where you have him in the mines in that massive suit because he needed that suit to protect him and obviously maybe contain his powers because he's less powerful when he's exposed to the yellow sun. And even with the suit on, he was weakened in the mines and that's why he was trying to get out. And the reason that he was trying to kill Superman was to get rid of the headaches because they had that connection. Being the reverse version of each other and having them in the same existence and the same plane of existence is not supposed to happen. So that's why they have that connection. And so he kills the other people apparently according to him because they're just casualties and he's trying to get to Ali and he's been unsuccessful at trying to destroy the pendant and so the only thing left to do is kill Earth Prime's version of Ali. 
And so he begs Superman to do it and he actually agrees to try and get the pendant and destroy it because Bizarro wasn't strong enough to destroy it. Remember a couple of episodes ago before the Superman of America went after him, he was trying to destroy it in the middle of nowhere. But he believes that maybe Superman does have the power to destroy it considering the fact that he is powered by the Earth's yellow sun but Bizarro isn't. And clearly he's not revered in his world just like Superman is on our Earth, like where Superman is loved by everyone. In fact, Bizarro is very scared, it seems, about people tracking him down and coming after him. So I'm pretty sure the person he's scared about not only is Ali, but is probably Superwoman, so probably Lana Lang. So there is always the chance that she comes through to our Earth, actually. And so he leads us to believe that Ali is going to try and merge herself, like her two versions of herself, so yeah, probably Bizarro didn't kill the other version, if that's still a possibility, which is definitely on the table. And so if she merges, she could become a god, and that's where you might see the parasite version of Ali that we've been talking about, because in the comics, Ali Alston is in fact parasite in some iterations. And so then we move on past here and we have Lieutenant Mitch Anderson being told what's up by his superior. So he's basically forced to think on his toes and he comes up with a new idea later in the episode of how to actually get through and get Bizarro in order to not be having these powers who are stronger than him breathing down his neck anymore. But let's talk about the Kent side of this episode. So we have Jordan and Jonathan, they go through a lot. We have the ex-Kryptonite saga with Jonathan basically going to his match, he inhales ex-Kryptonite and just before that Jordan spotted the inhaler and Jonathan blamed it on his girlfriend having asthma but obviously that's not the case and you know his girlfriend like pops up every once in a while and she's pretty much like vying for him and you know all the drugs and stuff because she is the dealer. And so obviously some conflict comes into play when Jordan finds out that Jonathan has been taking X Kryptonite because one of his friends and one of Sarah's friends basically says that Timmy, who is being investigated by the police because of him taking X Kryptonite, have been using X Kryptonite with an inhaler and Jordan remembers, oh yeah, Jonathan had an inhaler and this is probably why he got chosen for the football team. So then they go into a confrontation towards the end of the episode. So I thought this episode was very good in terms of the Kent stuff and, you know, Lucy and Lois and what happened with them. And so I like the conclusion that we got with Jordan and Jonathan because, you know, Jonathan obviously is quite desperate and he wants to be, you know, more like Jordan and also be able to be good on the field. And that's pretty much all he cares about right now. Like, he wants to be as loved and as admired by everyone as Jordan is right now because of his powers. So he wants to be Kryptonian, but he also wants to be a good football player and be chosen all the time. And so he thinks the only way to do that is by taking the ex-Kryptonite. But let's move on to the next thing. So General Lane shows up and Lucy Lane returns. So very happy to see her back. I wasn't sure if she was coming back this episode or when she was coming back. But basically, they get into a fight right away when Lucy sees Lois and vice versa. However, Lane breaks it up and he's like, look, just be a family, be sisters, just don't talk about the Ali House and stuff for now. And everything goes good for most of the episode. Like, she reunites with Jordan, Jonathan, and also Clark, and they talk about football, and it looks like they're having a really good time, and she's fitting in. And then she even goes to the football game later. And so this is like all happy and good and you know, they're having popcorn, they're making jokes and they're enjoying the football game. But at the football game, Lucy and Lois talk and it's good at first, but then they get into Ali and their beliefs. And then Lucy storms off shortly after before General Lane comes back and he's like, where the hell is Lucy? So if I'm going to give my analysis of Lucy in this episode, I really like this version of Lucy. Because you guys know I've been a big critic of this new version of Lucy because it doesn't feel like the Lucy we had before. But her interactions throughout the entire episode when she was being nice and friendly to everyone was really good. Like I really enjoyed her being around and it's something that I would like to see in the future if they can resolve this Ali issue. I think the main thing is we have to get Lucy to see actually how bad Ali is and what potential threat she could bring to RF. And I think at that point she's gonna turn on Ali and she's gonna side with Lois and Clark and everyone else 
and I think she's going to be a good character and be on our side and kind of change and I'm looking forward to that episode I don't know when that's going to come but sometime down the line as we get closer to trying to stop Ali we don't really see Ali in this episode apart from the bizarro version of Ali but I'm sure we're going to go much more into her in the next couple of episodes let's move on so we have a funeral for the Superman of America one of the parents of one of the soldiers gets completely mad and slaps Lieutenant Mitch Anderson obviously very rightfully so because he just risked their lives without analyzing the threat and so at that point it seems like Superman and him are finally on kind of good terms as Superman reveals that he's actually captured Bizarro and obviously this comes as quite a shock and Superman asks for the pendant and it's at this point where he kind of devises, oh, we need to do something about Superman. I need to kind of use this leverage of the pendant in order to get him so that we can get to Bizarro because he must pay for what he did to the Superman of America. And so just after their talk, there's an avalanche actually in the place that shall not be named. And so he stops this avalanche and Mitch finds out about it and becomes a little bit suspicious. But the episode doesn't actually go into that that much apart from the fact that he tracked where he was going. And so then we move back to Jordan who is at school after a talk with Jonathan briefly. He sees Sarah and they sit behind each other in the classroom and so they have like a little chat about what happened and she's scared for her mum and we hop over just after this as Kyle returns to their house and talks to Lana. So in this episode in regards to that storyline a lot goes down because obviously Lana is coming to grips with what's actually happened and she talks to Clark at one point and he recommends maybe you should talk to the lady at the bar who cheated with Kyle to try and listen to her side of the story and then later on Lana goes to the fire station and everything seems okay at first but then she reveals that she wants Kyle to move out and so he's gonna be you know somewhere else for now I don't know where he's gonna stay but this isn't obviously like a finalized thing as Lana is trying to realize what has actually happened and how she actually feels about it and specifically how she feels about Kyle. So it's a natural reaction I feel. I like this part of the episode. I think her reaction is good because I guess she's kind of taking into account all the possibilities and what actually went down and the fact that you know he stopped after Sarah's incident to help his family. I think that kind of boosted him up a little bit in Lana's books but Obviously, there is nothing to excuse, and I think Lana's reaction is right, so let's move on beyond this. As we head towards the end of the episode after the football match, Clark has to run out, and it's because he got a signal from Lieutenant Mitch Anderson to come to the DoD, and actually, he is trapped. He is put in this hallway that we saw in the Bizarro world before, where Bizarro had that fight. I thought that was, fight was interesting because it didn't seem like he was using his powers. We didn't get any explanation for that, but obviously there was some sort of ex kryptonite there because we get the reveal here as Clark is unable to use his powers, but he fights his way through the hallway against the soldiers until he is shot by Mitch using a kryptonite gun. And so things aren't looking good for Superman as he is incapacitated by Mitch and this kryptonite bullet obviously is something that General Lay made in the past and it seems like General Lane got a tip off by someone who used to work with him at the DoD because obviously a lot of people probably witnessed what Mitch did and General Lane definitely still has links there so it makes sense that at the end of the episode he is the one to find out about Clark being arrested and so obviously his reasons for arresting him aren't actually true like he hasn't committed treason or anything like that but he's basically using his imprisonment as leverage to try and get to Bizarro as like I mentioned before he will do anything in order to prove that he is able to stop this threat and he basically is trying to atone for the mistakes with the Superman of America by stopping Bizarro and capturing him once and for all and he will go as far as capturing Clark and so Clark is going to be going to Tauro's prison so we're going to probably see Tauro next episode which is going to be interesting but I wonder how they break him out. Is it going to be a Jordan mission? I think General Lane is going to be heavily involved because obviously he hasn't been arrested under like proper circumstances. He was attacked, he was cornered, and 
he was falsely arrested. So Mitch has a lot of potential to get into big trouble here from the government. So what an episode that was. So much went down. I can't wait to find out what actually is going to happen to Bizarro next episode and how Superman is going to get out. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to track down where Bizarro is. I would presume they're probably going to try and torture Superman in order to get the information out of him because as of right now, he hasn't revealed where Bizarro is and that's obviously what they're trying to go after and they don't know the location of the Fortress of Solitude, only Superman, Lois and Jordan know about it so I wonder if they try and get through to Lois if they're unable to break Superman to find out where it is. Or maybe Tauro is the one to reveal the location of the Fortress in order to get on the better side of Lieutenant Mitch Anderson, maybe to gain some leverage. But yeah, so much went down and I'm looking forward to next episode. I really, really like this episode. I think it's definitely one of the better episodes of the season and I think it's a very solid season. But we'll talk more about Superman Lois as we live stream tomorrow night. So subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about my live stream. It's going to be at 9pm UK time tomorrow. So that's 4pm Eastern Standard Time. Translate it to wherever you are around the world. Before we end this, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. And for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, and stay safe out there. I see red.